Hey, hello and welcome once again to my YouTube channel. This is Reflex Image. If this is your first time visiting, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and also turn on the notification icon. If you're already a subscriber, welcome back. I just to remind you if you are not on my Telegram group, kindly go and join my Telegram group today. You can access to all the files I'll be dropping and the files I've actually dropped in the past, including the overlay that I'll be using this particular picture. I'll be dropping the collection for you guys to download from. So this picture was taken with Canon 6D, satellite setup. 15 millimeter Canon lens. So I'll be transforming this picture to this Mona Lisa painting backdrop and make it look very, very nice. You might be thinking this is one of the hardest OER manipulation, but trust me, to me, this is one of the simplest manipulation I've done in my photographic career. So I'll be walking you through the process of how I actually did it. So stay with me, guys, and I think you'll be able to replicate this at the end of today's video. So, first thing you need to do is to open your picture in Photoshop. So if you have to shoot on RAW, it's going to bring it to camera RAW for you this way. And you do your basic adjustments once you're done. Just open your picture in Photoshop. And let's wait for it to load up. So these are the picture it's going to load up. So these are how wide my backdrop is, as you can see. There's no much border room there. So teaching you how I create my border room, etc, etc. The next thing you need to do after doing this is for what? It's for you to actually retouch your picture. Whatever you do, retouch your picture before you start manipulation. Because if you have to finish the manipulation, then you want to go back to retouching. You need to stress your So please try as much as possible to retouch your picture before you before you actually go into the manipulation. So that being said right now, so let's say we're done with our retouching. The next step is what we need to do it. So we to extend our backdrop to make it a little bit wider. So I'll just have to go to my crop tool. Here's my crop tool where you can click on C on your keyboard. It's going to take you there directly. So let me zoom out a little bit. As you can see, my picture is taken on landscape, but I actually want to turn it back to portrait. So that's why I'm using 4x5 instead of 5x4. If I'm to turn it like this, as you can see, I'm going to return it back to landscape for me. But what I want is a portrait size. I'm going to switch it back to 4x5. So I'm going to increase from the top this way, and I'll do the same thing from the bottom also. So I'll get enough border room from my picture. I think around this way is okay. I think around this way is okay. Oh, let's leave it around this way like this. Let's leave it around this way like this. And I'll click on OK. So you might be thinking, uh, what are we going to do with the remaining side of the wire? That's not an issue right now. So let me take you to where I've actually cropped out my picture, where, uh, where I've actually retouched my picture, which is this layer over here. As you can see right now, look at how I actually just increased. As you can see, something similar to this. Something similar to this first one. So forget about this two layers. This is the sample of everything we've done so far. And this is the layers we actually worked on. So these are just there for formality. I'm just walking you through from scratch how to do this. So once you're done with that right now, once you're done with the extension right now, the next thing you're going to do is to go to your background layer and duplicate it by clicking on Ctrl J. So let's name this layer now. Let's name it our subject layer. Subjects, subject layer. So here's the layer where we're going to remove our subject from the backdrop. And if you don't know how to do that, watch my previous video. I'll be taking because this is going to take a little time, so I don't want to waste your time. So go and watch my previous video, it's going to teach you how to actually do that. So once you're done with this right now, all you just need to do is to select your subject. There are so many tools you can use. You can use the polygonal axis tool. This is the one I use mostly. You can use the quick selection tool, you can use the uh select subject, etc. etc. You can also use the pencil to select at your picture. Just make sure you take your time as much as possible to select it out perfectly so let's say i'm done with selection right now because i already have my selection over here i saved my selection so you can see here's my subject over here what i just need to do right now is just to right click on it right click i'm going to feather by two pixel go to feather and i will feather by two pixel click on my ok then i'm going to max it click on the max icon over here the one that looks like the camera i click on it so we have actually separated our subject from the backdrop, but you won't know what you just did right now until you have to turn off your background layer. You have to turn it off, you see, we have actually separated our subject from the backdrop. The next thing you need to do is to go back to your background layer again by clicking and click on Ctrl J if you're using MacBook Command J once again. So we've duplicated our background layer back now again. So this one, let's name this one uh, Modify Layer. Modify Layer. So on this Modify Layer, all you just need to do is to hold down your Ctrl key. And click on the max of your subject layer click on the max so it's going to bring back our selection for us start that go to select now let's select go to modify expand by x pixel click on ok what we do right now this area that are out of that the background is not getting to we are going to add that to the selection right now so i'm going to click my my rectangle mark where it's on make sure it's an addition 
So I'm going to scroll from the top like this. I'm going to scroll from the side like this also. Scroll from the side like this. I'll do the same thing here also again. Scroll from the side like this. So I'm going to scroll from the bottom like this also. Just to make sure all the area and what are in the picture frame. Like this. So I'll scroll like this also. Let me add to the selection. Like this. So I'm going to add this down to it also again, but that I will use my polygonal luxury tool and I'll make sure it's an addition. I'm going to select the stand also like this. I'm going to select the stand like this. You can see right now. So the stand is what's part of our selection right now. I'll do the same thing to this stand here also. I'm going to add it to my selection. So what I just need to do right now, we just to right click on it. I'll go to my fill. In that field, I'm going to make sure my content away is selected. If it's not selected, just open it up and select content away. All adaptation must be on. Your blend mode has to be on normal. Opacity 100%. Then you click on OK. So we're going to wait for the AI to actually do what the computer to actually fill that area up with our initial backdrop by sampling from the initial backdrop and fill it that area up, up for us to make it look very, very nice and enticing. So let's see what it's going to give to us right now. And boom, look at what it did for us. Ctrl D to the select. You can see it filled the area up with the initial backdrop and it's looking very, very nice. So I'm actually think this is how wide our studio backdrop is without knowing that we did an extension there. So let's remove this little bit of blemishes on the backdrop by using our patch tool. Let's click on our patch tool. Let's reduce it. Please drag it down. Do the same thing here also again. I'm going to drag it down like this. Then Ctrl D to the select. After that, the next thing I'll be doing, my modify layer right now, I'm going to duplicate it once more click, by clicking on Ctrl J. So I'll name it from modify copy, I'll change it to my blur, my blur layer. What I just need to do right now is just to go to my filter. Under filter, I'll go to blur, then I'm going to click on Gaussian blur. So under Gaussian blur, I'll be using my undress as radius to smoothen the background very well, 100. And boom. But the issue I'm facing right now is the moment I actually blur out the backdrop, uh there is this straight line at the back of the backdrop is no longer there the shadow is no longer there so let's bring that back right now by clicking on max on our subject uh, on our blur layer then picking our normal brush so i already know where the area is so i'm going to make sure my brush is at 100 percent and my brush color is on black so i'm going to scroll over that area so it's going to bring it back for us you can see right now and i'm going to do the same thing to the shadow area also which is this area so it's going to bring back the shadows for us can see right now which is looking very very nice and enticing so that being said right now the next thing we need to do is for we to create the reflection a reflection down below so the next thing on the agenda for we to do right now is for we to create the reflection a reflection down below how to do that our subject let's duplicate it so the one under Right now, right click on it, then go to convert to smart objects. Let's wait for it to load up. So, once it does right now, all you just need to do is to right click on it again, then click on edit content. So, it's going to load the picture for you in another new tab. So, under new tab, let's go to image, under image, go to rotation, then rotate vertical. You can see right now, then click on Ctrl S. Then, once you actually save 100%, close this right now, then go back to your document, and boom, as you can see, it's rotate for us as in perfectly so ctrl t on it right now then drag it down drag it down drag it down to where you want it to be i think i want it to be around this way i'll click on my ok so under the opacity i'm going to bring the opacity down from 100 i'll bring it around 43 so i'll go to my filter under filter i'll go to blur i'll go to motion blur so i'll be using about 215 as my blur i'm going to click on ok i can decide to reduce the opacity a little bit but let's just leave it this way so yeah we'll, here is where the manipulation comes in so you guys might be thinking the manipulation is very very hard, probably is a very very complex manipulation. But the beauty about this manipulation is once you're just bringing the picture, bringing the overlay, I'm pretty sure it's going to work perfectly. So I'll just go to my file manager, I'll go to where the overlays are located, go to where it's located, go to where my overlays are located. So I will search it out. All the values we're giving to you guys are free to download. So you're able to download the overlays free of charge. So I'll just have to drag it to my Photoshop. Drag it out to my Photoshop. Wait for it to load up. So this is the first one I'll be using right now. I just drag it up. You can see, drag it. It laps perfectly to where I want it to lap. So I'll adjust a little bit, and I'm going to place it. You can see right now. So what I just need to do right now is to change the blend mode from normal. I'll bring it down to soft light, and boom. 
but it's too in focus i don't like the way it's in focus i'll just go to my filter another filter i'll go to blow and i'm going to blow it out a little bit i'll go to gaussian blow so let me use about 10 pixels of my radius let me do 10 pixels of my radius right now you can see next thing i'll be doing right now is to bring in the second overlay i'll bring in the second overlay by going back to my file manager again go back to my file manager and I will search for the one I want to make use of. I can use any one, so let me just use this one. Let, let's go with this one right now. I have to drag it out to my Photoshop again. So this time around, instead of being it being at the top, I'm going to drag it down below. Drag it down below like this. I think around this way is okay. So I'm going to hold my control key down. I'm going to expand from this side. Don't forget, I'm holding down my control key. I will expand from this side also again. So it's going to be as if she actually be sitting on it. You can see. I'll click on my OK. So once I'm done, I'll wait for it to actually place the picture for me. I'll still do the same thing I did in the first one by changing the soft the blend mode back to soft light again. From normal, bring it down to soft light. You can see right now. But the opacity is too much on my liking. I'll just drag down the opacity a little bit. Still my uh, our shadow is showing the way I want it to. So with this right now, you are actually getting what you want to achieve, as you can see. Something like this. So I'll still blow it out a little bit also. I'll go to filter, I'll go to blur, and I'm going to use let's use about 12 pixels as our radius. Let's use 12. Let's use 12 pixels as our radius right now. But my reflection is not changed very, very well. So I'm going to drag it below my reflection layer. Let me drag it down below my reflection layer. Let's drag it down. You can see my reflection is changing perfectly. You can see our picture is looking very, very nice, very, very hyper realistic. Some actually thought this. Is a Mona Lisa painting if not that she's just black so, so the next thing i just do right now is for me to color grade my picture i'm going to click on my uppermost layer and you guys don't know the lot i already in the most which is my Mela chocolate and it's actually going to go perfectly with our skin so i just go to my adjustment layer i'm going to click on color look up and don't forget the lot and my other values i believe was still in my store. i believe was still in my store and let's go to my store and purchase them today and improve your picture editing skills so that's in the just open it up like this and I'll go and look for my Mela chocolate. Here's my Mela chocolate. I'll click on it and boom. Give us a low light vibe. The picture is looking very, very nice. But if it's too dark for your liking, just come down to the opacity and drag the opacity down. I think 60 is okay. And it's looking very, very perfect. The next thing I'll just do, you can also export your picture this way. And you're good to go. But I still love using a particular skin tone, which I use in most of my picture, which is my near brown. So let's just apply it and see the effect it's going to give to us. Go back to my adjustment layer, click on my color lookup, open the 3D lots, and I'm going to scroll down to my near brown. And boom, it's going to give me this cool skin tone in, in conjunction with the backdrop. So, with this right now, I've created a nice Mona Lisa painting look alike in our studio. So, if you find this video interesting and educating, don't forget to drop a like. Some of them are being in need of these, and also share with your friends. Don't forget to join my Telegram also. The files will be dropped on my telegram for you guys to download for free and work with. If you have any questions, you can contact me down in the comment section or via my WhatsApp and do via my WhatsApp and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. See you guys in my next video. Reflex out. So in case you're interested in getting any of my picture editing file, from my overlays down to my color lookup, which is my lot file. So you just have to scroll down to your video. So under the comment, this is my description. So it's not going to load the description for you. You just have to click on show more. Click on it. So it's going to show all the options. Once it does that, just click on my store link. So here's my store link. Once you click on it, it's going to take you directly to my store. So you can actually select any file you want. From the color lookup, this is a light skin lot. This is a feather, which I used in my recent video. This is 100 premium baby overlays. This is my fourth video course. This video course entails on how to download all the files I want. The site I use in downloading all my files free of charge, including my Photoshop panels also. This includes my PNG files. This includes all my packs, all my picture editing files, my premium overlay, my PNG, my flying fabric, my color lookup, my preset. So once you buy this, you've already bought everything apart from this one. So here is my flying fabrics. Here is my, in case you want to give me any project for me to work on. Here is my color lookup, here is my background overlay, and here is my preset file. So in case you are interested in buying anyone, you can actually go for them. The good news there is that you can actually buy your own currency, any currency of your choice. You can buy with any currency of your choice. 